In this lab, we're going to be measuring the acceleration due to gravity, the constant g, by dropping a ball and filming its motion. We're going to be using the two kinematic equations shown here to analyze this motion. We'll be studying the y position versus time and the y velocity versus time using a constant acceleration model. The way we're going to capture data is through the idea of video capture. Here's a frame from a movie that we'll be analyzing later. This shows a ball being thrown, and the tennis ball in the image is the yellow dot, and a movie is just a series of still pictures played together very quickly so our eyes perceive the changing pictures as motion. If we look at one frame, and then the next frame in the movie, we can track the ball's motion. The displacement vector is shown here, which represents where the ball has moved in these intervals of time. Looking at these two pictures separately, we see that they are separated by 1 30th of a second. That's because most digital movies capture images at a rate of 30 frames per second. So we can know the time interval between this as 0 0.333, etc. seconds. And so what this is going to tell us is that if we know the displacement vector by measuring it in the picture, and we know the time between the frame intervals, we can take those displacement vectors and turn those into velocity vectors, and ultimately a measurement of the acceleration due to gravity. One note is that when you film motion in what's called slow motion, your phone or camera is actually capturing images at a faster rate than the standard 30 frames per second. And if you film the object falling in slow motion, then you will need to know what the frame rate of your camera is and adjust the data collection software accordingly. Let's take a look at how to set up this experiment. For this experiment, we only needed a few pieces of equipment. We're going to need a small dense object. In this case, I'm going to use a ball, and it's going to be falling in the action of the Earth's gravitational field. We're going to need an object of known length here. In this case, I'm going to use this bubble level, which has a known length of 61 centimeters, so I can set the scale of my video. Well, I've also set it up so I know that it's horizontal, and that's going to help me sort out my horizontal and vertical axes, but you don't really need to do that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object and I'm going to drop it while filming it using a video camera or a smartphone camera. All you got to do is take a uh, video, you can set up your phone to do this, and then you hold the ball and then release the ball from rest. You shouldn't toss it up. Instead, just go ahead, let it go. You might need to take a few trials to get it right, but all you need to do is drop the ball and film it. And from here, we're going to go into the video analysis. Let's go ahead and take a break from this video for a moment and go and check out the video on the eClass page that gives you instructions on how to do video analysis using Logger Pro. When you feel confident about that, come back here and we'll resume with the analysis of the acceleration due to gravity. After you have finished your video analysis, you'll get some results that look like this. Here I recorded some time with uh, holding the ball, as well as when it was falling, which is what we care about, and then a little bit of time after the bounce. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the part of the data that we want. We want from the moment we drop it down to the last time it's in the frame. And that's going to show us these rows in the data set. So that's row 27 to 44, which by clicking Shift and clicking over the region, I can select that. And I'm going to hit Copy, uh, Command-C on my computer, and head over to a spreadsheet, where I can just paste it on in. Uh, I'm going to, again, insert a row above and make that into a header row. I'm going to say that this is the time in seconds. And then I'm going to have the position x in meters, y in meters, vx in meters per second, and vy in meters per second. So with this, we can carry out the analysis of our data. The first thing that we want to do is to make sure that we get a time variable that starts at the top of the 
curve. So the time in seconds is going to be equal to the time in the cells here, A2, minus the start time, which is uh, the first entry here. So I'll type in 51.75 uh, 51 so that should give me zero for the first time, and then I can paste that on down. And from here, I can make a graph. For example, I can plot the y velocity versus time by going ahead to insert a chart, just like we would do last time. I would want to make this into a scatter plot, and I want to make sure that I have time on the x-axis, and I'm going to remove the time axis from the y, and that just shows me the time for this uh, ball falling down, and we can see we have a couple extra points here where the velocity uh, seems to be bouncing back, uh, and that's from the ball hitting the ground. So I don't want to use those last couple of data points here. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and delete this chart, and instead drag everything down except those last two points, because clearly something got broken there. So we'll go ahead and insert our chart again. We'll go through the process of making it a scatter chart where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is velocity. And now we get a nice linear relationship. So now I can go ahead and fit the relationship between the velocity and time in, and say use the Linus function. And then I want the range e2 to e17 as my y variable, and then I want, in this case, f2 to f17 as my x variable. Again, remember that I've not included those last couple of data points because they are affected by the ball bouncing off the ground. Then I'll say that I want a y-intercept, and I want the full information, and this gives me an estimate of the acceleration due to gravity as the slope and the initial velocity here as the intercept in this function. So you see that I'm measuring g to be approximately g equals minus 10, or g equals 10.2 plus or minus uh, 0 0.08, 0 0.09. So 10.26, if I'm going to round that. So notice I have one significant digit in my error and I have uh, rounded my acceleration due to gravity uh, to the same number of significant figures. This concludes our introductory video about the acceleration due to gravity. Your next step should be to read the lab manual, understand the required assignments, and go ahead and submit those to E-Class.